Well, 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 welcome back to Crowns Control Cave, waking up for you very nice and early and safe and safu Sunday morning over here from Helsinki, Finland. Want to be wishing you well, want to be wishing you the best, the best, the happiest of the happiest on this last day of March. This is the first stream as well on my new computer, which I'm very excited about. Still need to fix out a few more kinks, but I think that we're good enough to do a video now. So very exciting times. And as always, want to be wishing you the best, the best, the happiest of the happiest. And let's get into the live scene. As again, it is the last day of the month, so that means that all my programs are on sale for well, I suppose just today and then a no more sale year with the with the code year 20. That's 20 percent off all capitals. Just how you see it spelled right here. Uh, that goes for all the programs, all the payment plans. I have payment plans all the way up to 10 months, even accepting uh, PayPal. We can also do cryptocurrency, of course, as well. Uh, but I was but I also want to make sure more importantly, that's a good fit. So if you are considering these first, understand what they are. The trade like professional program is the on comes in technical analysis program that covers technical analysis, trading strategies, risk management, position management, understanding underlying market dynamics access to the hidden members discord community and access to a couple of proprietary indicators. It is a 35 hour plus long program and quite intense. The master options program is like that, but stepped up one more because now we're talking about the derivative products options. The jewel indicators are just quite literally access to indicators. So these two programs right here, are both 35 hour plus long programs. Very, 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 very intensive, especially the options one, which I would suggest that you have a decent understanding of technical analysis beforehand before ever considering even looking at it. But of course, I'll let you make that decision yourself. I want to make sure that it's a good fit, most importantly. And how I kind of describe this is please take advantage of my free content first. That's what it's there for. I have over a thousand hours on, on YouTube with dedicated playlists actually to that fact, not just streams, but dedicated playlists for learning technical analysis. That I believe is probably going to get most people most of the way that they want to go. If you want to take it one step further, if you want to do this in a more serious manner, usually in the vein of doing this as a living, then that's when I would say that's who these programs are created for. So if that doesn't sound like you, then it's probably not a good fit. And again, that's not meant to talk down to anyone or anything like that. We all just have different perspectives. Some people want to, you know, I don't know, do, uh, do something else. You know, maybe, maybe your passions lie somewhere else. Again, this is just for people who really are really, 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 really hardcore, die hard, looking to do this typically in the vein of as a living. So let's get into the, let's actually get into the analysis right here. And whoops, there we go. Let me just get this off right over here. Last time that I have to remember this. Come on, baby, where is it? There it is, I see ya. And no more embarrassing, <laughs> leaving that up for the rest of the stream. Okay, so here we go, Bitcoin. Let's bring it over to the daily. Take all these, uh, take all these drawing tools off. Let me just make sure that my whole screen is coming through it is okay great awesome um basically bitcoin actually did close a nice what do you want to call this long legged doji yesterday uh on the daily low volume so overall you know on the daily i think it's a little bit more to be construed as consolidation uh lower time frames look like something's happening every hour but of course it is a weekend it was a saturday yesterday and uh typically speaking don't really see too many big moves on a saturday not always of course but more often than not not uh not so much now we did have this move down the other day to test to retest the 40 uh level of support which has acted as support so far putting on the drawing tools you can see that as long as bitcoin is essentially crawling its way up above and using this 40 30 uh trend line to to bounce off of you know you could uh, i would say that this is this is very constructive price action whoops there goes my other screen over there come on baby there you go um and we do still have this resistance trend line coming in right over here right around 40 30 and actually you know what i'm going to put a lower one right around the weekly 200 exponential which is right at uh, 41 a little bit above 4100 so because it is the end of the monthly and the end of the weekly, this is of extreme importance because this level right here is the big level for bulls to break. If bulls can break that, then I would be looking for a much higher move. Well, much higher is a uh, is is a perspective thing, right? But I would basically be looking for a move probably somewhere around the uh, the 4,500 mark according to this measure move. Uh, I'll actually draw on the formation just a second. I don't know why my drawings are getting deleted, but but yeah, pointing all the way up to about 4,500 to share, yeah, we do have this massive symmetrical triangle forming right now. Let's actually get it all the way down over here, uh, getting this 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 upwards trend line, grabbing all the spike lows, going all the way back to uh, middle of February, getting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, seven lows right there, and just walking our way up. You can all see that that it is the four hour 200 exponential and 377 exponential. So I do like that kind of for good confluence. And basically the story is, is that as long as Bitcoin's using this to rally off of, I would consider this more constructive in nature on the more on, on the more immediate time frames. Oops, just make I'm just gonna delete this over here. I have to apparently I can't have two windows open at the same time for uh, for trading view. Otherwise, just get all these chart layout uh, mess ups. 
But more importantly, for this area right over here, yes, as long as we are kind of being walked up by this major trend line, which is currently coming in a little bit above 3,900, actually. It's, it's coming up quite, ag quite aggressively at 3,920. Um, as long as we're kind of walking that guy up, uh, I do consider this constructive in nature. In fact, we're going to look at GBDC later, which does show... Well, we'll look at it later. Anyways, uh, this right now, to kind of round this one off, we could actually make this like here, and we have just some one massive symmetrical triangle. Of course, symmetrical triangles are equal opportunity patterns. They like to break out to the upside as much as they like to break out to the downside. Typically speaking, in the overall side of the trend, they, you know, they're more statistically likely to break out. But of course, like I've said with every pattern, I don't care about you know what the you know what the thought process is on him. I only care about how you react at support and resistance because that's really you know that's really the only way that I can trade. Let me actually just make sure that I have Deribit up over here. I am actually still in my long on uh, on Deribit. Let's see, can I load it up? Come on, baby, there we go. Yeah, I think I got it right over here, and I'll actually bring it on. Um, okay, all right, let's see. I just do want to make sure that I get this over there. There we go. Okay, great. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I'll be holding on to this long as long as we are above uh, 40, 30. And sorry, I should actually show it. Jesus, uh, I'm 50,000 contracts still long from 39, 32. Um, and uh, running about half Bitcoin profit right now. Uh, that was a position that was 180,000 contracts big. Um, what was it like a couple days ago? I've just been distributing it ever since Bitcoin got above 4,000. And I'll be holding it as long as we maintain above this trend line right here, this 40, 30, this 40, 30, 40, 40 ish area, the, essentially the area that we retested. Um, what was it, you know, late or sorry, early yesterday on this massive wick down that was immediately bought up. Now, here's the thing as big, the more and more that Bitcoin kind of grinds at this resistance area right here around the 4100 level and i do consider kind of where we are right now as you know as that sort of behavior um i do actually look for this to probably pop back down and retest this area overall we've been grinding this resistance just like we round this support and typically once you've kind of you know spent your time <clears throat> comes you know I, you know i'd be looking for us to come back down and test some supports after testing some resistances more importantly this massive triangle does have an apex in late april so you know these things become quite likely to break once they become you know about 70 to 75 percent full i'd say that we're just nearing that point right now but we still do have a little bit more space to fill out so my point is, is that uh, I wouldn't really be looking for this formation to be broken he right here, right now. I mean, could that happen? Absolutely. I mean, you know, again, this is this is why I don't trade my opinion. I trade technical analysis. But if we, you know, if we actually took out forty one hundred essentially on you know a two hour, four hour dildo, then yes, I would. You know, I I would be a buyer of that. I'd, I kind of have to uh, taking these guys down. Like I said, the measurement would technically be pointing towards forty five hundred. Although as a trader, I wouldn't I wouldn't you know count that as like oh you know uh, what's what's the word uh, a done deal. I'd be looking at the next major resistance, which is going to be right here actually, uh, right around. Right around about 42, 42.50-ish area. Uh, then we have another block in this uh, 4,300, or sorry, 43.50, and then 45, uh, what is it? Yeah, about 45.50 right over here would be the full measure move. So, you know, I really dislike playing uh, counter patterns to the overall trend, and the overall trend has been down, I mean, for more than a year now. Uh, nothing's changed on the weekly time frame, which I always like to uh, go back to. Um, and uh, and essentially, you know, that, you know, if, if we did break to the upside, a bullish break in an overall downwards market, always get very apprehensive about that. And that's why I plot out those more preliminary resistances to make trades off of. You also notice that one of them is going to be coming in right where the yellow 21 exponential on the weekly is at 4250, that next sort of uh, preliminary trend line if we break 4100. So I would say that it's extremely likely to get to 4250 if Bitcoin does break 4100. Um, but looking at the full measured move from there, well, you know, it's it's really going to depend on how tonight closes. You know, if tonight closes above some other critical areas, then it's really going to start to shift around a lot of the uh, long term to macro time frames. Let's actually go to our weekly on Bitstamp right now. And my God, where, <laughs> where, where, where is all my? Uh... This is so strange. It's it's like reset everything that I've done on TradingView. That's so annoying. Um, okay, let's try this. There we go. Let's make sure that this color is. Uh... Uh, well, that's good. That's good enough for now. All right. So the so this light pink, if you want to call it that, is the 200 simple moving average. This purple uh, moving average is the 200 exponential moving average. And, it's, and essentially, as from the higher time frame perspective, as long as Bitcoin is kind of just playing between these two, the play has been buy the 200 simple, sell the 200 exponential. No more complicated than that for the last 
five months now, quite literally five months um, as of uh, tomorrow. And if Bitcoin, that also means that if Bitcoin could break above or below one of them, that would be a change of behavior. So if we could break above this uh, this purple 200 exponential, which we're certainly very, 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 very close to right now, uh, that would certainly open up, open up the floodgates for a more prolonged run into the 4,000s. And that's where I really do think that 4,500 becomes a legitimate reality. And that's why this is so important because we're putting all the piece, puzzle pieces together as Bitcoin puts in a massive formation right now, which is going to have carry on over into the weekly and also the monthly, which we'll go over in just a second. But while we're on here on the weekly, you know, again, as a trade, separating trading from 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 technical analysis sorry it's trading separating trading from opinion my opinion could be you know we're bullish or bearish but as a trader i have to be neutral as long as worth it as long as we're within this zone um as a trader if if we break out of this zone then yeah i'd be a little bit long if we break if we break to the downside of this a lot more of an easier decisive trade um as i'd be looking for you know a lower target in the mid mid to low 2000s but for right now we are grinding that resistance and we do see that weekly rsi is rapidly approaching or sorry is not just rapidly approaching is at is quite literally right at the exact trend line that we built up while consulting above 6000 for about 5 6 months between uh between july and november and right now we are coming back to retest this area which bitcoin or sorry the rsi you know, typically speaking, will you know will will reject on first pass on something like this. More importantly, I'm seeing the RSI get extremely erect and uh, and quite you know quite aggressive in these areas. When realistically, price action has not taken out any major resistances. So, if you're looking, you know, if 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 you are a more um, if you're a more RSI oriented type person, they will tell you that this is just resetting the RSI right now. I'm not. I'm not myself. I mean, RSI is probably like the last of my of the indicators that you see on my screen that I use. Um, I put them above 200 bands though. Uh, but hey, you know, you know, looking at something like this, not only do not only are we rapidly approaching this this resistance trend line, but you can see this straight up move is getting to the edge of the bearish control zone, which a lot of the times is defended by the nature of it as well. It's just a lot of bots, you know, kind of taking over around that time. Anyways, um, that is why I'd be a little bit more on edge in this area until we actually get this this weekly close, which happens later tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern time set in stone. But let's go back down to lower time frames and just show some more about what's going on over here. Because the more that Bitcoin grinds this area without breaking it, the more and more likely it becomes to actually kind of uh, come and you know come back down. Here's the thing, though: even if Bitcoin does not break 4100, the 200 exponential on the weekly that we're looking at right now, by tonight we do have the monthly to worry about, or sorry, not worry about, but but be cognizant of. Of course, you know this is this is an, an agnostic uh, an agnostic work here. But going back, sorry, to the monthly now. I do want to show that if Bitcoin is able to close anywhere above essentially 39, sorry, yes, 3,900, this green moving average right here, which is a 50 exponential for Bitcoin, which was broken for the first time in its history in late December, or sorry, early December of 2018, uh, then that would also very likely open up the floodgates for a move higher into the 4,000s, actually not just 4,500, but perhaps even beyond that, you know, perhaps even uh, test the 200 exponential, 200 simple on the on the, uh, on the the daily, which is somewhere around 47, I believe, 47, maybe 48. Let's actually put this on. I believe that I still have a 55 on this. Yeah, I need to go with a 50. Apparently this just like uploaded all my settings from ages ago, which is very bizarre. Anyways, the 50 has been working better for me in cryptocurrency land, a little bit more accurate, especially on the lower time frames. but even on the monthly, uh, still getting it right, I believe. And, uh, and we're gonna have a chance tonight to close once again above it. So are we going to see, are we likely to see some fireworks com coming into the daily, weekly and monthly close later tonight? I would say probably yes. Um, if the bears are going to attack, they're definitely going to do it right around that time because they do not want to give up this green 50 exponential moving average right here. If we close above, that would really open up, like I said, a test into the deeper 4,000s and realist, I mean, te technically speaking, I'd be looking for a test probably of the red 10 symbol moving average, which is going to vary. No, they're not going to cross each other on this tick, or at least I'd imagine that they probably don't cross each other on this tick, but the red 10 symbol and the yellow 21 exponential are getting damn 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 close and a lot of the time when you do see a cross like coming in like this you want to see a test coming into the cross so even if bitcoin does close above the 50 exponential do i immediately get bullish no i'd immediately get bullish if we close above the 21 exponential that would be a different story the yellow moving average right here but the green moving average no i would be looking for a more extended run into the 4000s and i'd want to see you know a, a test somewhere around this cross happening and then perhaps sometime next month if that test is rejected then i look for further downside but for right now, 
Um, you know, f uh, for right now, with this move up, they will not officially cross. I, 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 at least I don't believe that they'll officially cross. We'll actually have to, you know, uh, look at it tomorrow um, by end of, or sorry, end of month, end of day, essentially. Uh, same thing, one and the same. So that's what I'd be looking at right over here. Not only that, but bringing up our monthly authors, we do see monthly stocks getting pretty far down there. But again, that's not a huge consideration just because you can stay in the more critical zone for quite some time. Just like over here in the bull market, you stayed in the more critical zone uh, to the upside for quite literally about a year from January 2017 to, uh, to January 2018, actually. And right now we've been in here since uh, December of 2018. So you know, because only spend some more time in there. Um, and realistically, I, you know, realistically, I've been saying with this for a while. I think that this whole phase of the market cycle is probably going to take a lot longer than I think most people are really prepared for. Uh, these sorts, these sorts of, <laughs> these sorts of phases can take a long fucking time. I mean, we can just bring up a chart of gold right now and just look at what gold's been doing for, whoops, uh, man, typing on a new keyboard is very difficult. A lot more difficult than you think. Um, going over here on gold, I mean, this is a weekly on gold, and gold's been consolidating ever since putting in its bl uh, blow off top for five, sorry, six years. Jesus Christ, man, six years. Yeah, January 2013 to our present time in uh, March 2019, more than six years. Um, and that's kind of my point is that this this can take a long, long fucking time. I mean, putting it on a monthly, uh, it even looks quite similar to Bitcoin on a monthly, uh, funnily enough or not funnily enough. Um, so yeah, it's just worth consideration that, uh, you know, I know a lot of people are calling bottoms. I know a lot of people are calling that this thing's about to rally to fucking 5,000, 6,000, whatever it might be. Just understand that this can take a long time because while the more recent price action does look constructive, which would imply more bullish nature, this whole formation right here still, it still does imply a more corrective nature, but this can take a fucking long time to play out. And that's, that's, what's a little bit concerning. So I think a lot of people are getting very excited, but might be a little bit misleaded in what this means for the overall picture. So, of course, um, that's something that I really want to offer up right now. Anyways, while we're on here on the daily, let's go look at the daily uh, oscillators. Daily stokes are up, and you will notice that we probably are going to be creating some sort of a trend line right here as Bitcoin consolidates on this whole time frame within the stokes right over here. I, I do like I do look at my stokes for for sort of a ranging price action, which is exactly what we have right now. Uh, daily RSI is going to be technically we're, technically we have some bearish divergence going on between this point and this point. I mean, we did print a Doji dildo right there, but it's really split in hairs. What I really think is happening is that we have one massive whoops one massive consolidation being shown like this, which is exactly what you want to see. Um, you know, on your you know on your RSI, I, you know, I like that it's mirrored. Uh, on this oscillator and typically speaking I actually like to you know I'd rather see a pattern in the RSI than on price action anyways taking that away you know it is worth mentioning yeah we do have a little bit of bearish divergence here and uh, we are getting rejected from the bullish control zone um, do the divergence bots take, so, take over by end of night possibly possibly but um, you know yeah, I mean, yes, this is confirmed as a local high, so it is comparable. Uh, let's look at the 12 hour. 12 hour is going to have the same sort of thing. 12 hour bearish divergence, one, two, three stabs actually coming all the way back from here. So, you know, typically that does get played out coming from these last three highs right here. Uh, and I'd be looking for a test down to the 21 expansion, which is exactly what I was talking about yesterday. You know, we, we spoke about um, how I was looking for Bitcoin to pop back up, test the 4100 level again. We got that and then probably come back down and test test the support. And, uh, and then we'll figure out if this uh, if this wants to continue on from here or not. But I do believe that actually uh, Bitcoin probably does come back down and test some supports after this. Like I said, this formation has an apex uh, late into next month, which you know starts tomorrow. So so about you know another three four weeks, uh, which it can spend some you know just tells me that it can spend some more time in here. Um, maybe it comes back down to forty thirty, reconsolidates there, and then tries again. But I'd really be I'd, I'd be very 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 cognizant of this uh, forty thirty area right here, just because. If Bitcoin does break it, um, then I'll be looking for a test back down to the low side of the range, which is that 3,900 level. Keep in mind, though, 3,900 are also extremely important from the monthly perspective because that is where the 50 exponential comes in. So as long as Bitcoin is above there by end of night, I would be incorporating a more uh, a more near term bullish view for Bitcoin, you know, coming into the next month. So that's what I'd be saying about that. So again, uh, relating all these time frames together, that is the that is the art of what you know of uh, um, of what we're doing right now. And basically, Bitcoin is well. What what are we doing on the twelve hour? Twelve hour Stokes are quite tired. They're getting they're getting very mature up there. Let's get rid of this. Uh, the twelve hour Stokes actually have been pretty damn good at calling moves uh, in more recent times. Like we said, bearish divergence as well. So not necessarily the best setup right now. Typically not the setup that you see when a major uh, you know when you're approaching a major resistance. 
resistance and want to break it. Uh, 10 hours, same thing right over here. Bearish divergence going all the way back from about the same area. Uh, getting at this point, this point, and this point. Higher highs on price action, lower highs on oscillator. 10 hour stokes are also t are, are already turning down. Um, those have been pretty accurate as well. So again, just another thing kind of saying, eh, I'd like to see another test at the very least of 40-30-ish area, 40-40 maybe. Um, let's go over to the four hour. Four hour stokes are likely gonna be down. Yeah, they've been flying down since uh, yesterday. And we're just kind of grinding this area as well. People are gonna be telling you that this is uh, flagging out around this resistance, which kind of looks like it on a four hour, but the higher time frames suggest otherwise. It, it, it looks a little bit more tired than, uh, than this. Uh, let's go to the two hour. Two hour, same thing. Uh, two hour, two hour jewel actually uh, might be lining up for a sell signal relatively soon. I believe it maybe it was a three hour that had a good one. Yeah, the three hours also the three hour could also set up in the next day or so as well for a decent signal. Uh, but it actually the two hours, the two hours going to be a lot more fast. Uh, we do also see the two uh, two hour RSI trending below the exponential right over here and putting in that same bearish divergence on this run, which I believe that that one had already played out. Uh, but for right now. Super low time frame stokes are actually up right now. Uh, two hour and one hour are likely going to be up. Or sorry, hourly is down. Two hours up. What is a three hour doing? Three hours got to be down. Yeah, three hours got to be down. And everything else is uh, down all the way up to a 12 hour. So <clears throat> that's kind of what I'm looking at right now. Uh, let's go over to the two day total time frame as this one has also been incredibly useful because this green 50 exponential moving average on the two day total time frame has actually been really, 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 really good at catching the last ends of runs for the past year. That has been the trend. And going back and kind of back testing it we do see this little run up above the 50 exponential just immediately knocked back down to you know the low side of the range retesting this area at 30 or 37 not not the best reaction but let's go let's go to the time before that in uh in 2018 right over here where bitcoin got above the green 50 exponential for just a second and then smacked down to the low side of the range the time before that was right over here where bitcoin got above the green 50 exponential smacked down right below right below and full move onto the downside of the range the time before that a lot more precise right uh, right on this run to 10,000 and lost 50 exponential and back down to the low side of the range. Time before that, uh, again, much more precise and double top of 12,000 and down to 6,000 and just about a straight line. So we are seeing a little bit of divergence in behavior because all of those happen relatively violently and relatively fast. And in this more immediate time frame, we see Bitcoin getting very comfortable right around this green 50 exponential movement average, which tells me that we actually do have something. Uh, we, we actually do have, you know, what can be considered a change of behavior uh, upon this time frame. Uh, and Bitcoin's actually rallying off of it right now. And you saw the last few times, this really hasn't spent too much time above the 50 exponential once it got above there, once it regained there before, you know, getting smacked down uh, in a very violent way. So Looking at this right here, you do see that the 50 exponential is being used as support. It's right around that critical um, psychological 4,000 number, which I would say, uh, as long as we're above, that would you know that would be your more preliminary support as long as you're above i do consider this uh i do i do consider this aggressively constructive i suppose you could say meaning that uh, meaning that could break out to the upside at any time uh by the same token obviously this yellow 20 minute exponential moving average right here mirroring our same uh you know our same rise in support going on from uh middle of february which would currently be coming in around right around that 3900 level right around the 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 monthly two uh the monthly 50 exponential as well so great confluence between those uh more importantly and also you can see that uh, the, these moving averages would be suggesting that this does break to the upside as the 21 exponential has a much more aggressive slope in comparison to the 50 exponential. Which is our, which was our resistance now being used to support. So, so I'd like, I'd like to see the 50 exponential walk it up now. Um, let's look at our, let's look at our oscillators. Two day stokes are getting up there, um, but not showing any sort of, uh, not not showing any sort of weakness. Just kind of chugging their light, their way along. Whoops, sorry about that. <laughs> Some food coming up from yesterday, baby. Uh, two day RSI. Mm, people are gonna tell you that that this is bearish divergence again. I, I, I need to confirm a local high here first uh, before I consider it that. Um, or sorry, it's it's not even gonna be a bearish divergence to begin with because well, no, it, it could hold on. No, it it can't be. Sorry, it, it's it's not even a consideration. Uh two day delta time frame, just two day delta time frame looks looks like it wants up. Uh three day delta time frame, what do we got over on over here? This is where things get a little more interesting. The moving averages do look like we want to give a little bit of a test to that uh green fifty exponential moving average right here, which would line up beautifully right at that forty two fifty level. So if Bitcoin does break up, I would be looking for a relatively rapid move towards forty two fifty. Um but also keep in mind that uh, three-day stokes are in an area which is, 
historically relevant. The three-day Stokes have created a trend line going all the way back from December 15th of 2017, right over here. You know, the high of 20,000 for Bitcoin. And we've been getting a lot of major bull traps along this trend line ever since. We had obviously, you know, 20,000, 20, uh, the ultimate high for Bitcoin so far. Then we have uh, May 10,000 high right here on that bull trap last year before going down to 6,000. Then we had uh, August bull trap at 8,400 before moving down to 6,000 as well. And look at this. We are going to be reaching this trend line probably on the next tick, which happens tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern time. We will be getting another, a new tick on this. And that means that uh, we'll, we'll likely formally test this trend line. And if I do see that Bitcoin turns down from this area, if I do see weakness in this area, I will consider that as this trend line still being respected, which has been working for the past year. And the trend is your friend until the end of the trend. <laughs> until the end of the trend, again. Um, so, yeah, that's what we'll be looking at right over here. Uh, very, 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 very interested to see how we actually react around that area as that has once again been the trend. Uh, three day, three day RSI. What are we looking at? Uh, floating up into the neutral zone again, kind of, uh, kind of getting into. No, I don't want to call that's not divergence. I mean, Jesus Christ, man, everyone calls everything diver. You know, I was, I was reading around, people were calling that divergence. No, I don't, I don't agree with that. You know, you could say this, though, you could say that we're making one massive rising channel. Uh, and I would agree with that, you know, something like this. But, uh, th you know, it can stay within this rising channel for quite some time, uh, but is worth, you know, you know, is worth monitoring if we do come back down and test those areas. We'll be looking for bounces or sell offs around those areas, you know, around the critical points, obviously lining up with the trend line. Um, and yes, you can make trend lines on RSI. In fact, I trust trend lines on RSI more than I do on price action. So, yeah, I think we just covered all of the daily two day, three day. Yes, good. OK, back on to the four hour. Did I cover everything that I want to say here? Um, I mean, I think I've summed up my thoughts pretty pretty well here. You know, we got we got the retest of 4100. Yes, okay, got that. Uh, be, now I'd be looking for us to come back down and test some supports. Uh, I think 4050 would be pretty likely, but really looking for that 40 40 to 35 move right here. Again, it's 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 not anything crazy. The relevance for me though is is that if we do break this area of 4030, I want to get rid of the you know I want to get rid of this position. I did sell some calls against that. Uh, just kind of cover it for right now. And basically, the way that I'm going to be managing this is that if Bitcoin breaks above 4100, I just buy them back. No problem. Uh, just buy one to one with spot versus uh, spot versus options, and maybe and probably even put a little bit more on that because well, I mean at that point, like I said, I'm probably bullish till I move uh, for a move towards uh, 4250. Um, by the same token, if we break down below here, well then I don't want the spot underline. I'll just get rid of that, take profit on that, and let the uh, short calls run. Um, let's see. I do want to check out what the volume profile is suggesting right now for this, as uh, we are on the four hour. Okay, yeah. Let's let's check. Oh man, it's all the way up here. It's really uh, messed around with my whole settings now, hasn't it? Do I have my Do I have the right settings on this? Let me Let me make sure. Um, let's go with the row size. Uh, let's go eighty. There we go. All right. Um, yeah. I mean, here's the thing: is that once Bitcoin gets above uh, forty two hundred, it's really not too much thought as far as volume profile is concerned. It's really not too much in the way. I mean, that is a little bit concerning. Like, you know, if Bitcoin especially gets above forty four hundred, forty five hundred, it can rip. Uh, as far as the volume profile, the volume profile is showing is significant, or sorry, uh, ex extremely low market acceptance. At, you know, anywhere above about forty two hundred, uh, it can rip. I mean, it ripped on the way down. It can rip on the way up. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, if, you know, if it does start to break, I would be looking for a rather quick move. Let's actually go over the eight hour. I forget, you know, I'm, I was curious what the eight hour is showing. Yeah, right here. Yeah, that's what I wanted to show. So the eight hour 377 exponential is coming in right, it has actually been governing the highs so far. And you can see that this has been a pretty good marker for sales uh, in the past year. And the fact that, it, and the fact is that right now we're being governed by it on this massive uh, uh, symmetrical triangle formation. So here's the thing. We did, we, we talked about all the bullish scenarios. Let's talk about some bear shit now. As well, this is a fucking cave now, isn't it? And so we can make the same sort of mesh move that we made for the upside, for the downside, something like this applying it to, you know, move down around here, which, you know, if, it, you know, if we were to break to the downside, I would be looking for this to, you know, likely hit around 3550, essentially the range lows, essentially uh, coming, coming back from our, our, our current lows. If we go over to the daily, I'm sure that we can find a trend line that meets up with that as well coming from, yeah, our December lows towards our February lows, which would meet up absolutely perfectly with it, which is, you know, that's, Usually good when you have when you have confluences like that. I'm gonna get rid of this trend. Well, I do want to keep this trend line in. It it is relevant. You know, if we do break down, I would imagine that we probably don't break this guy to the downside. We probably get walked down by it. But uh, but for now, I do want to keep all these in. As annoying as it is, it they they are relevant. Maybe I could get rid of this one right here. 
That one's not that one's not too important. Maybe I could get rid of this one right here. Yeah, we can keep it like that. I can get rid of this one right here. It's 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 not it's not coming into contact anytime soon. Um okay, cool. So yeah, if Bitcoin were to break 3,900 to the downside, I'd be looking for that move to 3550 uh, ish area, which, you know, essentially just walking us past, you know, back to our prior lows. Um, you know, this trend line that's been kind of holding Bitcoin up. So that's what I've been looking at right over there. Um, but of course, right now we are much more close to uh, to breaking this bitch to the upside. And like I said, technically speaking, that would su that would suggest a measure move towards 45. But like I said, also, and I hope that I'm very clear about this again, separating short term, medium term, high time frame and macro time frame. Um, I'd be looking for a move to 4250 relatively quickly, probably probably sells off from there, reconsolidates a little bit lower and then probably tries higher. It's, and then and then we'll figure it out from there. You know, if you know if it's gonna if it's gonna actually reach that level or higher. Like I said, technically speaking, though, measure move to forty five hundred. But like I said, I really dislike playing patterns in the you know up in the overall posing direction of the of the overall trend. So, okay, let's actually move this over. Let's go right over here. This is not in the way. Okay, cool. All right, so let's go talk about uh, CMEs right now. And CMEs are very important to me because, man, this for whatever reason it just loaded all of my old drawings this is really annoying uh, i'm gonna get rid of a lot of this stuff okay we can get rid of that we can get rid of that we can get rid of all of this oh man it's really annoying nope you know what we're gonna do we're gonna do it like this okay boom and just redraw it we got this guy right here which we already had drawn in we have this guy right here and this guy right here. Now, here's the thing. CMEs do look like a rising wedge, which typically implies a more bearish nature. In fact, Friday's closure looks like a rejection of the Cyan 89 exponential moving average right here, which would also be hitting the top side of this resistance trend line, as you can see, which which forms this rising wedge. Volume signature would, would suggest that this is a rising wedge. And also, we do have some pretty nasty bearish divergence going all the way on through here, even forming this trend line on the RSI on CMEs, which I put a shit ton more weight on, which is not only going to form and bearish divergence, but also kind of mark off this whole formation in general, which to me <laughs> would imply more bearish nature on it, actually. Uh, daily stokes are kind of weak trying to cross up, but we're going to get confluence on that, or sorry, we're going to get confirmation on that later tonight. More importantly, here is the big play for myself. Opinion aside, this is all, this is just trading opinion aside. If spot if if spot markets are trading below where CME is closed on Friday at uh, 4060, then I'll be a seller on gap fill. If spot is trading above where CME is closed on Friday, then I will be a buyer on gap fill. And again, that's 4060, so it's absolutely critical right now. We're about 18 and a half dollars up from uh, you know up from that area on spot markets. So keep an eye on that. That'll be the next big thing for me. If we do end above, that probably also does come in confluence with breaking this whole formation of the upside. Uh, if we do you know if we do end below, then Look out right for that uh, for for that monthly total close. Um, I would imagine that we probably do some do, do you see some fireworks right around then. Uh, let's see. Okay, so we got that dailies uh, daily stokes. Yeah, we uh, daily stokes are trying to cross up, but looking weak either which way. I'm curious what the weekly looks like. Uh, speaking of, uh, we did close last week like kind of decently. Um, yeah, kind of decently. Weekly stokes up, just very erect, but not too much history on those to go off of. Same thing with the RSI that we see on spot markets. Let's go down to a lower time frame. Uh, four hour right here. Four hour stokes are uh, very mature and wanting to come down. Four hour, just in general, looking like looking a lot more like this uh, this what's it called rising wedge, um, and with a rejection uh, ending on Friday, which would I mean to to me the the four hour looks like it wants to come back down to about four thousand dollars. And like I said, I put a lot more I, I put a lot more weight on the uh, on CMEs than I do with spot markets. So especially on the weekend bullshit action, which uh, this one looks like it wants to come back down to me. Um, yeah, like I said, about 4,000-ish would, would kind of make sense. 4,000 breaks, and I'll be looking for that move probably down to 3,900. Um, so yeah, uh, what else do we have to look at on here? I think that covers it up for CMEs. Um, the big news is you know where, where spot markets are trading in relation to when CME opens. Uh, GBDC, I do want to check out GBDC. GBDC does have some interesting, interesting to be aware of over here. And Jesus Christ, man, these... These, I've had enough of these drawings. These drawings need to go. All right, there we go. So GBDC, or GBDC looks to me like on Friday, Thursday, Friday, it actually had a little bit of a hunt going on right here, a little bit of a bear trap. Look at that. Very low volume ending below the support and then immediately bought right back on up the next day, which 
or, or was that same day, uh, which is, you know, indicative of a trap and usually a, usually a strong counter trend movement coming um, relatively soon. Now, here's the thing, though. We are making, you know, what do you want to call it? A rising channel, rising wedge. I don't care what you call it. Again, all I care about is how you react upon support, uh, support and resistance. And right now, uh, this this baby is holding up on support and getting rejected by the 200 simple on the four hour at uh, 475 and a half. But what do we, you know, what do I think on this guy? We do have four hour stokes up. So that would imply a more, you know, that that would imply that we actually do that we actually can break this which that's what i that's what i like to look at when you are grinding a resistance and you're just turning around the stokes that's typically a good sign um i do want to put in a nice horizontal right here however let's do that and right here get these ranges out and flying around uh there we go <clears throat> all righty uh let's go over to the daily daily however is telling a different story daily uh daily stokes are still down daily rsi printed some massive bearish divergence i believe that we kind of have played it out but overall the daily rsi would be more bearish in general just also in between the bearish control zone and the neutral zone implying that this consolidation has a more bearish nature looking at the volume signature for this consolidation it does look like it you know kind of fits for a rising wedge which means that we could very easily test this upside once again get rejected from there and then come back down which kind of looks kind of looks likely right now um so yeah but here's the thing i do believe that gbdc prices lead and precipitate spot prices and what I think that we're seeing right now is actually, uh, you know, we saw GBTC get rejected right at its former high, which would have been that 41, you know, that 41.50 ish level, and uh, and then come back down to base upon this rising trend line that's been holding it up ever since middle of February, which would have been where, like right around 3,900. So we didn't we didn't really get that in spot marks just yet. So do we have, you know, are we going to see that before GBTC opens tomorrow? Perhaps. Uh, again, it's just it's, it's worth consideration because this has been it actually has been leading spot prices for the past you know over a year. Uh, so the trend is your friend until the end of the trend once again, as the saying goes. Um, anyways, uh, let's go over to the weekly for a second as well. Weekly is quite is, is quite ugly actually. Uh, we have a major rejection off this yellow twenty one exponential uh, to end last week, which the twenty one exponential has been harassing price action ever since uh, you know May of May of last year at the uh, bull trap to ten thousand. And uh, this week we had continuation to the downside but ending as a nice hammer dildo both on you know not necessarily standout volume overall this just looks like a massive rising channel to me a massive uh, a massive bear flag essentially uh we do like i said uh weekly stokes are getting very erect and up we haven't seen them this high since uh, january 2018 weekly rsi same thing as we see on spot markets we see price action essentially flat but rsi is flying up which is not a good sign um, going back to spot markets, I do want to show a few more things. <clears throat> Let's go back on over here to, uh, to Bitstamp. I want to show a few more things. So we are actually going to be doing, or very, 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 very likely to be, to, to, to do something that Bitcoin hasn't done in a year to tonight, confirmed. And that is, we're going to likely open and close our first two week dildo above this red 10 simple moon average right here. We have, it is currently coming in around 37.50. So barring any major move down, any 300, about $300 move down below 37.50, we will confirm both an open and close on a two-week total time frame above the red 10 some moon average, which the relevancy of this is, is that Bitcoin has not done this since January of the past year. Uh, that was, you know, ever since the market cycle turned around, Bitcoin has not opened and closed above this. More importantly, uh, there are a few conflicting factors here. We do see these. We do see the yellow twenty-one exponential moving average and the and the green fifty exponential moving average actually having a bearish cross towards each other, which is gaining momentum away right now. You do see that these moving averages are diverging, which is telling us that the trend is getting stronger to the downside. But what does that mean overall? Well, with this cross over here, do I put more weight on this than I do on the red ten simple? Yes, absolutely, because it's a higher period. But does that mean that? What does that mean? What does that imply? Because if we do cl open and close above the red 10 simple moon average, I would say that we are very, 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 very likely to test this cyan 89 exponential moving average right here. Typically speaking, when I see these massive cr uh, crosses on higher time frames, as we looked at on the monthly, as we're looking at right now on the two on the bi weekly, uh, I want to see a test into that cross somewhere around it, somewhere in the vicinity with relation to that time frame. So, of course, you know, higher time frame is going to, you know, account for more degree of error, I suppose. And, uh, and, and, you know, I'd, I'd be looking for a test somewhere right around this range 
as you know as these two movement evidence gain more and more divergence away from each other which we sh will get another tip on these later tonight which should also tell us if it has diverged more or less if it converges then that would obviously be more bullish and it's and, and, and imply a move a little bit higher if it still is diverging then i'd be looking for resistance to hit in that next area uh more importantly though you know with that red tensile moon average uh that you know again just another initial thing saying hey uh we might be changing around uh we we, we, uh, we might be having a change of behavior on this time frame um let's go over here to the weekly uh let's go over the weekly take off the exponentials and put on the trollinger bands again not my favorite way, not my favorite thing to do but the median trollinger band if you are a trollinger band user which i wouldn't really consider myself to be but we are actually on the verge of both opening and closing our first weekly dildo above the median trollinger band which if you're familiar with the trollinger bands in sight typically implies a test of the upper Trollinger band, which would be right around the daily 200 simple and 200 exponential, right around 47, you know, 47, 50-ish area. So this one's coming in right around uh, 38.50. So as long as, you know, as long as Bitcoin closes above 38.50, uh, then we will, we will, have, we will have done something that we haven't done since again, January of 2018, uh, all the way back on over here. Yes, we did have a couple closes above some tests above the, uh, you know, above this uh, reddish brown skid mark uh, uh, colored moving average that you see. But we had no opens and closes, which is what we are on the verge of doing. In fact, you see that we're very obviously using it as support right now, uh, rallying off that 3850-ish level. So again, these have actually been working pretty damn well. Let me just make sure that I'm actually recording. I am good. Getting through another hour, hours long worth of video without recording would be absolutely devastating. Let me just check on over here. There we go. Okay, cool. Just see that someone's... Uh, hey, welcome on Twitch, man. Ba baby daddy trader. Good to meet you, man. As always, pleasure to meet new people. My God, man. It just makes me so happy when people join on Twitch. So if you are on Twitch, hey, please do consider join, uh, looking up uh, at Crown Crypto and, uh, and we can have some fun on Twitch, the secluded community. Anyways, uh, trolling your bands. Yeah, you know, if you know, if we if we do confirm anywhere above thirty eight uh, fifty on this week, technically speaking, that would imply a move towards the upper band, which is going to be rapidly declining. So probably actually coming around that forty five hundred level uh, by by maturation. But <clears throat> you know, just another thing, kind of coming around that level in confluence with the lower time frames, in confluence with the symmetrical triangle that we're also looking at. Uh, let's go over. Well, I think that does it for that. Actually, let's take off the Trollinger bands, put on the exponentials and simples, and there we go. Man, this pink one down here is really bothering me. I want to get it to. I want to get to the color that I'm used to. Uh, to. Um, okay. All right. Uh, let's see. What else do I want to look at? Yeah. Do you want to look at the dollar index right now? So the dollar index is very interesting to me. This, if, if you're not familiar with it, Dixie is the dollar index. It basically tells us how strong the dollar is. Uh, Terrible explanation, but in a way, yes. Um, and my point, and the reason why I'm paying attention to this right now is because we have seen Bitcoin, historically speaking, have a contra direction to Dixie, which when Bitcoin put in its highs, or sorry, when Bitcoin was rallying in 2017, going fully parabolic, you saw the dollar index go straight down. Bitcoin straight up, dollar index straight down. Then Bitcoin puts in its high at 20,000. The dollar puts in its lows at about 89 bucks, uh, or sorry, 89 points. And then Bitcoin just makes its slow descent over the past oh, a little bit over a year while the dollar index has been slowly but surely charging its way up. And to me, this does look bullish. I would be bullish on Dixie right now. Uh, Dixie seems to give absolutely no fucks about anything and keeps on chewing through all sorts of, uh, you know, you know, ev you know, everyone wants to be bearish on this, but I do not believe that this is the time to be bearish on Dixie. Even the weekly is the weekly is kind of technically lining up for a sell signal on the jewel. I would not take that. I do not believe that, that is going to work out. The, the, the weekly are. RSI is consolidating in a very bullish manner. We do even see a nice uh, fall, or sorry, a falling channel right here. Um, you know, you could call that a bull flag, I suppose you could say. And we're approaching a major resistance, which if the dollar index breaks above this $97.67, I would be looking for a move much higher to about 100 even, maybe even beyond uh, right over here to actually mark it off. Um, so this is very important to me because the trend has been for the past, you know, for the past couple of years, dollar, you know, dollar and Bitcoin are contrary to each other, which makes sense. Bitcoin trades against what? It's measured against what? The dollar. So if the dollar goes up, naturally the value of Bitcoin in relation to the dollar is likely to go down, right? So I do want to bring that up because, uh, because well, <laughs> got to be careful with something like that. Anyways, uh, let's go over now here. Let me make sure that this is safe in Safu. Let's go check out traditional markets really quick. Uh, spies. 
285 and show the same thing. Let's do the same sort of, uh, let's do the same sort of measurement. And I see a very, and I see, and in this one, I see similarities between traditional markets and Bitcoin. So an opposite, an opposite signal, but also of interest right now, because traditional markets are signaling a little bit of weakness around this level. And Bitcoin and traditional markets have been, you know, pretty much in sync for the major moves. You see them both put in bases during 2014, 2015. This is SPY represented by the dildos in the background, the red and green dildos, uh, the Christmas dildos perhaps. And as you can see, put in a base between 2014 and 2015 when Bitcoin was in its bear market, right? And then ever since then, you know, Bitcoin was essentially going flat here. You can't really see in the background represented by the red line chart, by the way. And then once they broke out, both going straight on up for the next three years, uh, all the way from uh, 20, uh, end of 2015 to 2018, straight up, just fucking vertical. Then they both put in their highs at the, you know, basically basically once 2018 starts right here, right here, Bitcoin a little bit prior. Then they both come down for major, major dumps. Bitcoin a little bit more aggressive, then pops back up right here, dumps back down to lows, pops back up. And then we see divergence. We see spies essentially go into an upwards consolidation, whereas Bitcoin goes into a side sideways downwards consolidation. But again, the more important trend emerges. Bitcoin breaks two new lows. It breaks a consolidation. SPY breaks its consolidation. They both come down major, major down for SPY, major down for Bitcoin. Putting in lows about at the same time once again. Bitcoin has once again gone into a sideways consolidation while SPY has gone into an upwards consolidation. Do we see that same trend emerge? Do we see that same trend emerge as SPYs look a little bit more under pressure right now? I do want to go to the monthly for SPYs, uh, get, off, get off Bitcoin and, and just kind of see what I'd, I'd, I'd be thinking on this guy. Spies will have a good close on the monthly, but they are kind of forming a quasi-moto right now. Technically speaking, it, it, it is actually called a quasi-moto, which is a little bit more bearish. But uh, weekly looks okay. We weekly does look okay. Daily, to me, looks like it wants to kind of grind this 282 area out and then come back down. Uh, we do have a daily dildo golden cross on spies right now, so I really don't like being bearish on something like that. But uh, the more time that it struggles right around this 282-ish, area 282 and a half, uh, the more and more likely it is to come back down and test this 275 ish area, which I'm still, I'd still be looking for. We do see daily Stokes down. We do see daily RSI having major bearish divergence, just popping back up to test the exponential right now. Um, I mean, it, you know, here's the thing. If we did grind this 282 area out a little bit more, we will set up for a perfect sell signal on the jewel, uh, sometime next week, I'd imagine. It's still going to take a little bit of time, but we'd have to grind out this 282 area. I don't think that we get a. I don't think that we get a perfect signal. If it is going to come down, it probably happens sooner rather than later. Anyways, uh, back on a Bitcoin. <clears throat> just making relations between those two. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about the. Let's talk some more about underlying market fundamentals. Um, so first things first. I'm going to bring up. Um, I'm going to bring up the MBT signal. And I actually reached out to Willy Wu yesterday on Twitter. I don't know if he got it or I don't know if he saw it or I don't or maybe he just doesn't care. But um, but uh, but I asked him if he'd be interested in coming on. I haven't heard any response just. Yet, but uh, but hey, if you want to if you want to help try to get his, get his attention, please go to I don't know I don't even know how you'd see my tweet <laughs> I don't even know how you see my tweet go to, go to my Twitter at uh, I think it's at Crown Crypto Cave and um, and uh, I tweeted at him yesterday so hopefully there's like some sort of paper trail to find that um, because I think it'd be absolutely amazing to have him on he's I think he's very unique and uh, and I love using his indicators for for a different look on bitcoin anyways uh while we're on here on the daily for bitstamp i do like i'm going to bring up the mbt signal for the uh for for right here and we can see that the mbt signal for the history of bitcoin has been absolutely perfect at getting the highs and the lows regardless of what people say about it you know regardless of the way that it's calculated the same sort of permutations that were available you know since the beginning of bitcoin uh are still available right now and that means that this indicator has despite all of those perhaps uh, inadequacies has been perfect amongst that getting all the major tops and all the major lows perfectly it signals red above a 140 marker signals green above a about a, or sorry uh, below a 50 marker um and more importantly we are rapidly approaching that 40 marker or sorry that 140 marker right here into the red zone which calls the tops we got all the way up to we got all the way up to a actually 140 um a couple days ago on the 29th or was that yeah it was a couple days ago so the fact is, is also, I mean, you can see that we do have resistance in this area, you know, kind of getting all these toffs, and that's exactly what we're grinding right now. Uh, also of importance is the MVT signal was creating a nice uptrend line, a very aggressive uptrend line right here, which we actually broke. We actually broke down below it on the most aggressive trend line uh, on the 25th. So it's been living below it and then using it as resistance ever since, getting one, two highs. So 
we are starting to see it kind of fall over as it approaches a major area. And as Bitcoin is around a major resistance, taking this off and taking off the drawing tools. Uh, if we go to the weekly, we can see that the weekly has been grinding this 200 exponential moving average, which has been getting all of the highs ever since Bitcoin got into this, you know, into this more aggressive downtrend. I mean, Bitcoin broke essentially the 200 exponential for the first time in its history in December, or sorry, November, late November, right over here. And then ever since that, that has been the highs of this whole consolidation, getting one, two, three, four, five, maybe working on a six high right now. Um, so very important. Um, also on top of that, let's go back to the daily and bring up the MBT signal. Uh, you do see that the MBT signal is, I mean, just is looking like it's a little bit tired, but it's also having divergence with price action. We're seeing the MBT signal make higher highs, but price action is not making higher highs. Price action has not made a uh, price action has not made a higher high over this guy right over here, whereas the MBT signal is making higher highs. So we are seeing divergence by the nature of it. You know, the bulls are using more power and getting less, you know, less of the way. So. What does that mean? Well, like I said, historically speaking, this thing has been perfect. And so uh, we are approaching a major resistance area according to this, which is also found on price action with our major exponentials on all higher time frames, daily, weekly, monthly, um, right in this range. So the MBT is one, sorry, I forgot to remind, you know, I, I forgot to remind myself to actually speak about it. The, <laughs> it is the network value divided by the daily transaction value and then interpolate using this more uh, forward, uh, uh, or sorry, backward 90 day smooth, smooth move average, which essentially, again, just, it get it, it just has been getting the highs and lows right. But it's a fundamental indicator is my point. It's not really related to the price volume and time indicators that we look at on the charts right here. It's related to you know, the fundamentals, I mean, like what's actually going into the network. So <clears throat> to see this actually, you know, really be a good indication of major, major moves uh, is, it, you know, is quite, it, you know, is quite enlightening. Let's also go over here to the Bitcoin price models, which Willy Woo has gone ahead and plotted all these different, um, all these different markers. I'm not going to go through them all, but basically a bunch of different MBT signals with, uh, with, with various moving averages, uh, realized market cap, market cap, delta cap, average cap, top cap, info cap, fees. Okay, there you go. Um, and, but basically here's the thing, and you don't need to know all that to just look at this chart and understand what's going on. And basically you see the, you, you see all these, you see all these moving, or I don't want to call them moving averages, but you see all these lines, we'll call them for, for lack of a better term. Uh, when they converge, that seems to call when the low is in, whoops. Oh, motherfucker, you bat, this is Willy Woo. I think you're amazing, man, but your fucking website is awful. <laughs> I'm sorry, man, it's, it's truly awful. Uh, zoom out, here we go. You can see on the major market cycle lows for Bitcoin, you see all these guys converge on each other and that's where the low is put in, right here, right here. And if you look at the more recent times, can I get my pans? All right, just go right, right on over here. Um, you can see right now that are we converging all these guys? No, in fact, we see all of these lines really like move away from each other, or at the very least, they're kind of like parallel to each other uh, in these more in these more immediate ones right here. So that to me is a little bit concerning, um, as that is just not how Bitcoin has put in major market cycle lows in the past. Uh, not only that, but we can go over here to the Bitcoin network momentum, which if you're not familiar with this, the network momentum is, is a view created by, created by Positive Crypto, which looks into the value transmitted through the block through the Bitcoin blockchain denominated in Bitcoin value plotted against Bitcoin's price. There you go. It serves as the leading indicator of Bitcoin bull markets. Okay, great. So uh, I've heard Willie Wu speak about this, but I think he's actually missed something. It's crazy, you know, it's it's like someone, I, I didn't make this indicator, but I, I think I'm seeing something here that, uh, that other people are perhaps, uh, you know, people people are looking at this right now saying that this is calling a bull market, but I don't, I don't look at it as such. First things first, you can see in the past in this market cycle right over here, this market cycle right over here, the oscillator is gaining momentum first. It's making higher, uh, it's making higher highs and higher lows. You see this right here. You have like, you can make like a nice uptrend line. You see it right here. You can make this nice uptrend line. We don't necessarily have it in this more immediate uh, time frame right over here. More importantly, the bull market is achieved once the momentum, once, once this, uh, once this, essentially this, uh, Jesus Christ, this, this line is getting above essentially the support trend line of the past prior market cycle. So you see, you have a, you, you know, if you could draw in a trend line right here, we could get a nice support trend line for this oscillator in confluence with this uptrend for Bitcoin. It was like, you know, it was, it was a move all the way from, I think Bitcoin was like fucking, you know, in, in the single digits, double digits, maybe going up to, you know, a few hundred bucks. 
Well, you'll notice that when Bitcoin went into remission in the 2014-2015 bear market cycle right here, the oscillator dropped below, and then it was gaining momentum to the downside, making lower lows, and then once it started gaining momentum to the upside and broke, more importantly broke, and this is what I really wanna get at, broke the support trend line, which you know would now be would now be acting as resistance right around this area, this dotted this dotted area right here. That was when Bitcoin put in the low and rallied for the next three years, going straight up, gaining momentum all the way throughout the way. And right now we are well and far away from that next kind of bull market cycle support trend line right here. So you so I do want to see Bitcoin build it up, but uh, I wouldn't you know you don't really see the bear market being over until you quite literally snap through this trend line right here. So you see this right here, it's coming in right where my cursor is, and then line it up with price action, look above, right uh, right, on the, right on the line chart, you can see that once we broke above this area, that was the low, that was the low. So that would imply that we have to get above this area right here before, you know, before low is put in. Um, okay, cool, back on to the Bitcoin charts. Uh, let's go look at the crypto fear and greed index, ticking out of 56 right now. Um, again, technically on the greedy side, anything above a 50 has marked uh, major mark cycle tops recently. Uh, you do see on this chart that's, uh, what the fuck is going on? How likely are you to recommend Google Chrome web browser to a friend or colleague? Well, if you keep fucking asking, definitely not. Jesus Christ, man, <laughs> I'm trying to do a fucking video. <sighs> There's my autistic rage is just coming out. I paused about that, very embarrassing. Um, but basically, each and every time that Bitcoin's gotten above the 50 marker on the crypto fear and greed index, basically people getting a little bit more optimistic has marked major market cycle tops, or it's not, not major market cycle tops, but major tops in this market phase. Uh, this is your February double top at 12,000. This is your May top at 10,000. This is your August top at uh, 84. This is your September top at 73. This is your top in November before moving down to, from 6,000 to 3,000. And then once again, we're kind of getting comfortable in this range, which people are getting, again, we're seeing the same sort of thing happen. People are getting very optimistic. People are getting, you know, technically greedy right at this level where Bitcoin has not broken any, whoops, Bitcoin has not broken any major resistances. And when I say major resistances, I'm speaking very specifically about this 200 exponential moving average right here uh, at 4,100, which is very concerning, which is very concerning. Uh, not only that, but can we bring up bring up something else? Yeah, we can bring up the longs and shorts right over here, which longs and shorts are starting to show, once again, this massive differential between both parties. We see longs uh, at around 23,500 open longs. Shorts have actually gained in the last day. Shorts have actually added about 1,000 coins short, uh, but we do see it above uh, 19 and, about 19 and a quarter uh, open shorts right now with 3,500 of these guys hedged, so really a little under 16,000 open naked. So there is still a great imbalance in favor of the longs, and more importantly, we can see going in the past prior history for Bitcoin, uh, real time is actually a little bit higher for the longs. Uh, we do see longs right around the same exact level that we saw in November before the ultimate dooms drop, the fucking death and decay drop uh, from 6,000 to 3,000 right over here. Not only that, but shorts are quite literally right in the same area as well. This is your same middle of November area right here on the spike. You see Bitcoin, or you, see, you see the short interest is literally right there. More importantly, and God, oh, these bastards deleted all my, deleted my drawings in here too. More importantly, uh, each and every time that the shorts have gone down into this blue box territory, that's where all the major dumps have emerged from in the past year. That has been the trend. Again, your dump from 12,000 in February, double top 12,000 in February, going down to 6,000, top in May at 10,000, go before going down to 6,000, top in August at, 83, at 84, before going down to 6,000, top at uh, you know 84, before going down to 6, or sorry, this was August, yeah, uh, you know, sorry, August right here, 84 before before going out at 6,000, top at uh, 73 in September, top at uh, 63 before going out, for, before going out to 3,000, and then once again, we're in this range. We did not see that behavior, though. We did not see that behavior on the last time that we actually got into here right at the end of February. In fact, we saw an up move, but we have not seen a, we, well, did we see an up move? I mean, we didn't, we didn't break any major resistances, so that is counterpoint to that, but it, we didn't we didn't see we didn't see that 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 same sort of very violent reaction so that is important but once again we find ourselves in this range and does it happen now it, you know you know are people watching this enough yet uh so again just something worth considering just that has been the trend for the past year and the trend is your friend until the end of the trend do you have to keep an open mind for when the trend actually does end because we are seeing you know some other things start to suggest uh, a change in behavior but for now i would still be running with with the assumption that this is you know you know, I'll still be running with this until until I get like a full on, uh, full on um, 
confirmation that it is not. Okay, so we spoke about all that. Okay, I think we got through all that. Uh, let's now go over to Bitstamp, talk about some more long-term ideas as, uh, of course, I do wanna take everything off here and get naked, baby. So we talked about the upside potentials, um, 4,500. Uh, and uh, what, was, what was the other one? Um, about 47, 4,800, you know, around the daily 200 symbol, 200 exponential. But here's the thing. When do I, when do I specifically say I'm no longer bearish, I am bullish? Is it with a weekly dollar both opening and closing above this purple 200 exponential moving average right here? Actually, no, but I would drastically change my tune and I would not want to be taking shorts anytime soon. I would be looking for a deeper run into the 4,000s. Probably, you know, I mean, 4,500 becomes extremely likely. 4,800, 47, 4,800 becomes pretty, pretty damn likely. Um, and that kind of opens up, opens up the floodgates. But it's not until really when the monthly closes above this yellow 21 exponential moving average right here at about 5,200 where I start to say, hey, I believe that um, you know I you know I you know I'm 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 bullish now. Uh, that would be my major mark for that. It's obviously going to be precipitated by the weekly both opening and closing above that purple 200 exponential moving average, as uh, as well just the timing of it would have to you know would have to work out like that uh, in the current posturing. But <clears throat> that would do it for me. However, the more the most traditional technical way to do it is uh, is waiting for a breakage back above the area of breakdown um, around the six thousand level. So if Bitcoin could get back above there, no reason to be bearish at all whatsoever if that were to happen from from the most traditional technical analysis standpoints. So yeah, that's what I'm thinking right here. Um, of course, though, do I think that the ultimate low for Bitcoin is in? I think I'd be apprehensive to say such things. I think I'd be very apprehensive to say such things because as long as Bitcoin is essentially below those areas, it will still be in the back of my mind. Uh, I, I, I can't stress this enough. This whole phase of the market cycle could take a very, 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 very long time. And it is imperative to understand that to not get swept up in the delusion by both sides that are sorry that both sides has have as long as we are essentially you know just playing between the 200 simple and 200 exponential right here with that said uh, you know we can now go through why i believe that the low for the market is probably not in as of the right uh, you know as of this moment in time just kind of constructing a case so first things first this price action looks very uh, very corrective in nature but like i said it could take you know it could take some more time a test a test of the uh, of the daily 200 simple and 200 exponential is certainly not a question uh if we were to move up and out of this symmetrical triangle to the upside uh more importantly uh, more importantly, looking at the volume on the current low, that is not consistent with the way that I see major market cycle lows being played out. And of course, when I talk about major market cycle lows, this is something that I've noticed from my former, uh, you know, from my former profession as, as being a, a market maker, authorized trader on the floor of New York Stock Exchange, ARK, and later Chicago Boards of, of Options Exchange, where essentially across all, you know, across all assets that I've traded, whether it's equities, whether it's uh, Forex, whether it's commodities, whether it's magic and money, we see the same sort of behaviors in the charts over a long period of time. That is due to the fact that we're, you know, we're dealing with humans here. We're dealing with humans, emotions, human, human imperfectness, human irrationality, which gets represented in these charts in very, you know, in, you know, with different personalities respective to that trading asset. But the overall principles kind of align. And the first one is I want to see major, major, major volume being done on the low. And right now we don't have that. We have major volume being done right here, if you want to even call it that. If you represent this in dollars, it's not going to be, uh, as you know, this is represented in coins trader right here. It's not, and when Bitcoin is, you know, a third of the prices it was over here. I mean, this volume is actually like piss poor. But more importantly, this dildo right here was all selling. This was all selling on the breakage of of the 200 exponential moving average. Then it was another one, two, three weeks until Bitcoin actually found the low. You want to see that major volume being thrown down on the actual low, to not just because it's it's selling, but you want to see someone buying. More importantly. You want to see someone putting it in the floor. That's how major market cycle lows are made. And again, this is where I think a lot of people get it wrong and a lot of people show their naivete. Maybe they're not like deliberately misleading people, but maybe they just don't know. Major market cycle lows are typically put in by someone with extremely deep pockets, someone with, you know, 500 million to, to a billion plus dollars comes into the market and essentially, you know, their perspective is to buy as much as possible because they're likely a longer term thinker. And how do they do that? Well, they, they're fucking, they're going to market it. They're going to hit the market button and that's going to, that's going to show up in the charts and and they know that as soon as they enter into the market, the rest of the market knows. Just like what we saw over here in 2014, 2015, you see major volume spike up on this low. And then we never return anywhere within 
45% of that low ever again. I mean, that's, that's, that's pretty crazy. That's, I mean, that's 45% up off the lows in one week and never returns there ever again. Uh, cause everyone else knows. So they know. So, so that major market cycle mover knows that as soon as they enter the market, you know, other people are going to figure it out and then the low is in, and then it goes into accumulation for a little bit of time. Um, and that's kind of my point right there is, we don't really have that just yet. We don't really have that. Um, at least, at least my sort of marker, my visual marker for knowing that someone, uh, someone massive has entered into the market has not, you know, has, uh, you know, has not, uh, you know, has not been seen. Uh, not only that, the vo so, the, so the volume is not good enough. Uh, just as, just as an aside, I want to see volume similar to what we saw over here in the more parabolic cycle. Some, you know, you see the same sort of uh, behavior in 2014, 2015, this major spike right over here, this major spike right over here. And that was, you know, this was your major high, this was your major low. That's what, you know, that's, that's the personality of Bitcoin, so to speak. This guy right over here, not necessarily analogous to this guy right over here, especially when you look at it versus the dollar valuation, uh, BTC dollar value. Yeah, B BTC dollar volume, I should say. And yeah, looking at, it, looking at it right over here, I mean, this volume, which it was all selling to begin with, is not even anywhere near what we saw in December of, uh, of 2017. Anyways, getting rid of this uh, and getting rid of the MVT. Well, we could talk about the MVT so for right now. Uh, we are damn, we more, in, so first things first, we never hit a green to the downside. We got all the way down to about a 70 marker. Remember it takes green at about a 50 and below. Um, and uh, we never quite got there. In fact, we are quite, we're quite near the top of this guy right now. Uh, more importantly, so the MVT is also signaling that's, uh, also signaling that's, um, well, not necessarily as far, as far as history goes, no low um and this again has been perfect uh so let's take this off let's go look at some more we also see that on the daily bitcoin spent a lot of time at the current low one two three four days that's usually that's not really consistent with the way that bitcoin puts in major major lows just yet uh usually it takes about 15 to 30 minutes you know on its lows i mean just to put in perspective on this daily right over here bitcoin bounced up in one fucking day like 35 percent. that's more than bitcoin bounced up over the last 18 or 19 weeks how many weeks has this been uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. We're working on 19 weeks right now. Yeah, that's pretty crazy um, because Bitcoin has only bounced up from bottom to top right now about 25, 26%. Um, and let me remind you, that's over the course of 19 fucking weeks, almost 20 weeks. Bitcoin in one day bounced up significantly more over here. I mean, almost 40%. In the last market cycle, Bitcoin bounced up in one day Jesus Christ, man! I mean, this one's just even it's even more insane. Another another forty percent. Bitcoin hasn't even bounced up forty percent in the last fucking twenty weeks. Uh, that's also concerning. That is very concerning. Not only that, but huh, the so we talked about so so we talked about the reaction. We talked the t about the time spent at the low. Um, we talked about the volume on the low. We talked about the MVT signal. We talked about the Bitcoin price models. We talked about the network uh, mo the, the network momentum. And what else do we want to talk about? Um, if you're on green index, I suppose, uh, longs and shorts, we got that in there as well. I think I think we've already kind of mentioned everything tangentially speaking somewhere in this uh, in this video. Um, so yeah, if Bitcoin were to break onto new lows, uh, here's the thing though. Here's the thing. As a trader, as a trader, non nanos, but as a trader, I do not get short uh, until Bitcoin actually breaks the 200 symbol to the downside, which is all the way at about 3450, which is going to be rising up, you know, about 50 or about 25 bucks each each week. So if Bitcoin actually does break that area, that's where I start to take, take an actual trade, looking for that next major down move. Not not anywhere before that. Uh, of course, what is going on here? What is what is what are these things? <laughs> oh man, this is so difficult. All right, there we go. Um, okay, cool. So. Yeah, I mean, you know, if, if if you know if you're taking a short off the 200 exponential moving average right here, it's not a bad trade. I mean, that has been the resistance to short for the past five months. I mean, it works until it doesn't work, right? Uh, just know, just know where your risk management is. I don't hate it as a trade, but like I said, I'm actually long right now. Uh, I'm I'm looking to play a little bit of a different game with options right now, as uh, it gives me a lot more well options, I suppose you could say. Uh, but hey, if the 200 some moon 200 some moon average breaks to the downside, that's where I start to look towards these lower targets, uh, mainly in this blue box territory right here between 2300 and 2600, which is rounded up by these nice historical horizontal trend lines coming in all the way back from May and uh, in June of 2017, a very important time. Not only that, but you do see the 886 Fibonacci retracement kind of running out the bottom side of it, which is actually where Bitcoin did bottom out in 2014, 2015 mark cycle right over here. Not only that, if but if we put on the volume profile, you will notice that uh, major high value notes 
being thrown down right in this range as well, right around the mid to two thousands. Uh, and also very important that, uh, once we lose a 3,400 high value node, it is a straight shot down very similar to what we saw at the 6,000 level right over here. If we go over to the monthly, We'll quickly, uh, we'll quickly show that on the BLX index, the next major exponential, the next kind of target from a algo perspective will be somewhere right around here, right around the 89 exponential, which is coming to where? 2,500. So a lot of things kind of suggest in that area if, you know, if we were to break down. But of course, I always want to repeat, I do not take that trade until until the 200 simple on the weekly has, has been officially broken. And that is, again, 3,450 and rising over time. So very important. Uh, by the same token, I always want to repeat that I am a long-term bull on Bitcoin. I am a long-term believer in Bitcoin. Um, you know, I, I, I think that it, I think that it has a quite a quite unique perspective, and I think that it you know it actually probably does have a place in this world. You do see the infrastructure being built up around, and uh, and I think that that's a rather positive thing. So let's actually talk about why I'm so fucking you know why I'd be bullish long-term on Bitcoin if I just talked about all those bearish things. Well because I'm a trader first and foremost, and I have to fucking wait for confirmations. Uh, but if we go over here to the BLX index and put on the drawing tools, we can bring over the matrix is what I call it. And each and every one of these dotted trend lines represents a support trend line for a parabolic mark cycle in Bitcoin's history. This first one beginning in 2010, 2011, gets broken in 2012. That becomes the highs, the governing factor of the 2013, 2014 mark cycle right over here. Then we create another support trend line anchored in 2011 and 2012. That gets broken in 2015 and becomes the highs of our 2017, 2018 parabolic mark cycle right over here. Then we create another support trend line for that past market cycle uh, anchored in 2015 and 2016, which was broken on the move down below the 200 exponential below 4,000 right over here in November of the past year. And does that become our highest going forwards here? Do we have something to govern ourselves off of, you know, uh, you know, in the coming years? Could we say that perhaps in 2020 or 2021 that the high would potentially be uh, 40,000? Yeah. In fact, it's very interesting to me as well because on the Bitcoin price models, uh, if we pan this out just a little bit more, you will see that uh, this dotted trend, th this uh, this this dotted line on the top side has been getting all the tops. That is the um, that is the top market cap, which is just the average market cap multiplied by 35, which has been getting all the tops perfectly. And where is that coming in around at around that same time frame? Around 50,000, around you know, kind of around the same area that we just spoke about. Uh, going forwards, you know, if I mean the the further the more further out that we go, the more and more crazy that it gets. But you know, all the way out to like 2023, technically speaking, I mean, a potential high of 200,000. Do I believe that we're going to get to 200,000? I mean, I can. I, I think Bitcoin can get up to some of those crazier numbers. I don't, <laughs> I don't know about that. Remember, those those are like potential highs, not necessarily like an average price, but like a parabolic high, which would imply another parabolic d uh, down most likely. Uh, what, what we really want to see Bitcoin do is do some sort of like an S curve, which is a little bit more gradual um, rather than a parabolic move. Parabolic moves are almost always followed by parabolic drop offs, at least as far as I know, as far as I've seen. I can't remember it, and it, I can't remember one that hasn't been resolved like that. And you see it in Bitcoin's history each and every time that it goes parabolic it's followed by a very very nasty and sharp downturn um so yeah also of importance we do see the we, we do see a few of these uh, solid trend lines right here right here right here i'll focus on the more immediate ones um but this first you know th this first trend line right here holds in that first kind of consolidation before the bull trap of that cycle so you see it break out uh, above this trend line and then it bases on it on the downside even though it does kind of fail it never breaks back down below this initial trend line which bounces right here and right here finding the ultimate low. Well, Bitcoin made the same sort of thing in 2018, uh, Mark Cycle, getting the initial bull trappy area, or sorry, getting the initial consolidation before the bull trap of 2018 right here. And then we've actually been walked down below this trend line. And we could actually kind of come with a potential uh, projection on dates, you know, if we were to look at price projections as well, which would, imp you know, I mean, it's like if you're gonna get walked all the way down, Jesus Christ, man, could get nasty. Could, could also take a long time, but worth considering also worth consideration is a trend line is, is you know is this trend line right here which once bitcoin breaks out of it that begins your bull market cycle and uh right now we're actually damn close to it we're actually damn close to it so bitcoin could break above uh, the 21 exponential on the weekly which is also aligned with this trend line uh, going all the way back on over here you know would would that be good enough to start a bull market that actually has been the trend in the past so Maybe, <laughs> perhaps, yeah. If if Bitcoin breaks above this area, that would also be pretty uh, pretty big deal to me. Um, so cool. Uh, okay, what else we got? I think that covers it up for Bitcoin. I think we'll briefly go over the shit coins right now. Uh, I see Cardano over here on the bottom of my list. Uh, Cardano, I still believe put in probably putting a high right over here. Uh, bearish divergence on the daily now. 
will be getting a golden cross however so i wouldn't i wouldn't necessarily be getting too bearish on it yeah before i was gonna be having significant bearish divergence on it it deleted my drawing for this one as well but i know that we had a trend line right around here and we'll probably have one right here probably be looking for a move back down to test 1600 if things get really crazy I'd, I'd be looking for a move to test a 1450 ish area but i do believe that it's probably putting in a little bit of a local top right here it's also kind of making a rising wedge right something like this but yeah we, we've been looking at this one for the past week it broke above the critical the the big thing for this guy is that it broke above this trend line right here after it broke above 1350 that was a time to be bullish on it having to move all the way to 1750 not bad damn damn good move now i think that's going to come back down and consolidate lower uh let's go look at some um, bmb cash what do we got on bmb cash grinding that top once again exactly what we spoke about yesterday at the 17 dollar whoa wait a sec um hold on where's this coming from ah yeah okay, okay that's that's the same level this for some reason this chart looks different than the one that i looked at yesterday um i thought it was 17 and a quarter which was the resistance but uh I don't know, we're probably still respecting that. I, th I think I just, I, I, I think it's just off by a little bit right now. Uh, but yeah, same, same sort of thing right here. Kind of grinding this toppy area, you know, something like this. And an ascending broadening wedge. Uh, so I would be looking for a move, probably, probably back down to test seven or fourteen dollars and seventy cents at some point in time. I do think that we're just grinding this top before moving a little bit lower, consolidating here, and then probably trying again. Uh, let's see, Zcash, Zcash, the real Bcash, and. What do we have over here? Still in a descending triangle, except, yeah, I deleted my drawing for this one as well. This is really annoying. Hmm. Oh, well, first world problems, man. First world problems. Yeah, still grinding the top of this ascending triangle. Uh, has been working pretty well, but we do have daily stokes running to cross up. If it is going to break this trend line, it will do it sooner rather than later today most likely uh b cash b cash coming down like we spoke about yesterday grinding this area out at the 170 ish area and coming back down i'll be looking for this guy to come back down base maybe around 156 ish area would be the next uh support i'll actually just I'll, I'll just move this guy up there we go something like that would look about right let's look at tron cash uh, literally right in the middle of the range <sighs> between the between the purple 200 exponential and the pink 200 simple and again my chart looks looks different here Man, that is that is very annoying. Uh, let's see, maybe doing something like this. We want to make some sort of a formation. Could something like this, some like some massive triangle. But basically, the you know the purple two hundred exponential and two hundred simple. That's kind of where I'd be aim aiming my cannons around. In fact, if we use wicks, it's going to get a little bit better. Uh, if it breaks above two and a half cent, I'd be looking for a move probably towards uh, two point eight cent. If we break below uh, two point two cents, I'd be looking for a move towards uh, one point nine cents ish area. But for right now, right in the middle of that range, to me, that's that's a no trade zone. Uh, Neo Cash, Neo Cash taking a leg up, or sorry, not not a leg leg up yesterday, but yeah, this is where it's annoying, man. I know that I drew this in yesterday on stream, so I'm sure it's all documented there. I don't know why Trading is not saving this, but uh, yeah, getting rejected right at the top side of this trend line. We do have continuation on the downside. I do think that this one wants to come back down, test the 950ish area, most likely. Um, let's see, what about Daily Stokes? Daily Stokes are up. Daily RSI is consolidating. Yeah, nothing more than that. Uh, EOS Cash, EOS hit our move that we were looking for yesterday, or sorry, this past prior week at 450. Coming back down, kind of same thing. I'd be looking forward to base somewhere around and uh, and consolidate right around uh, 395 ish area. You do see a little bit more intense selling yesterday, actually. Um, let's go check out Ripple Cash, Ripple Me Nipples Cash, and we're at 31 cent. Where where's my massive triangle? Man, this that's awful. I got rid of my triangles. My tri I love my triangles. Where's where is my triangle coming from? Right over here. Is that it? What's that? Is it, mm, that doesn't look right. That doesn't look right. It would have looked like we already broke it out. So is it really like this? And we broke it out there. And then we break this guy right over here. Just getting walked up, perhaps. Yeah, I, I can't I can't quite find it right now. Uh no, I I think it was coming in from this area, is what it was. Yeah, some like yeah, here it is. <clears throat> so still making this ascending triangle right here and grinding the top side of it but being a little bit more resilient using the 10 simple to cl to rally off of and actually regain the 21 exponential moving average last night as well uh this is what i was talking about where i i said you know even though ripple technically did break down right here we already saw the move we saw the move to test this 29 cent support which is coming in all the way back from this area which we saw perfectly uh on march uh, 26th 
came back down test support now we go back test resistance uh, however it's being a little bit more resilient here we do see daily stokes up right at a resistance uh, if it does want to break it if, it's, if it does want to join the rest of the market it has free capabilities to do so and uh, this would be the time this is and this is why i say i don't want to be short this way right now even though you know chart doesn't look good all that good stuff uh it's just a time and a place. Same thing with the daily on uh, on the Bitcoin pairing. I was watching this as well. You know, yeah, I'd, I'd still be the 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 Bitcoin pairing still does look pretty weak. But here's the thing, man. And fuck, it's gonna it's, it's probably deleted my drawing for this one as well. It did, motherfucker. Oh, you bastard. But basically, we had drawn something in like this. No, it was uh, what was it? It was something like this. Yeah, it was it was making one massive falling channel with a test perfectly on it to the downside, which we've been talking about for quite some time. You know, it was it was, it was a good time to be bearish when we were talking about it uh, right over here, right as the death cross was kind of you know in you know in, in in the midst of happening. But now we just hit a major support and bouncing off that, still below all major moving average. It still does look bearish overall, but uh, not going to take too much to get a bounce here. Which, you know, if the rest of the market helps it out, you can just imagine, you know. Just, it, becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy uh daily for monero monero cash same same thing as we see on the other ones but again my fucking charts got deleted here bastards oh you bastards something like this what we're doing and something like this so making a massive consolidation right here in fact you know what? i'll just put in a nice uh nice horizontal make it right there we go there we go and to me this one this you know, daily stocks are actually up right now, but it does look to me like it actually wants to come down a little bit. Uh, do you have a strong opinion on this one? I mean, yeah, you know, maybe we grind this area once again is what that implies, like 50, 56, uh, 80 cents, um, and then come back down, consolidate lower. Again, going to depend on whatever the rest of the market does. Stellar cash, uh, grinding this resistance, just like we spoke about yesterday, uh, 10.8 cent. If that area gets taken out, though, I would be looking for another retest towards the prior highs right over here. Whoops, wrong thing. And it looks like it deleted my... It looks like it deleted my uh, my drawing as well. Ah, oh, bastard, man. Oh, that's so awful. But something like this, I think, is what we had. Something like that. Making a massive uh, ascending brawny wedge. Yeah, there we go. That looks about right. Uh, Daily would be suggesting that it does want to break this area to the upside. So, it, you know, if you do see 10.8 cent break, I'd be looking for another move towards like this 11, this 11 point, 11 and a half cent region right here. In fact, I, I think I'd feel more comfortable with saying that right now. It's been resilient in this area, uh, especially, you know, with regards to the rest of the market. I think I think it probably does get another test. Uh, let's see. What what about Mrs. Litecoin? Mrs. Litecoin losing her luster once again. Extremely mature formation. We are we we are golden cross on the daily, technically speaking, but major bearish divergence all the way through. One, two, three, four stabs kicked out of the bullish control zone, turning below the exponential. Daily stokes are down. Daily jewel is going to be setting up for a perfect, perfect, perfect sell signal in the next uh, three, 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 three to four days. I'd say three to four days, it will signal a, an extremely perfect sell signal. I mean, you know, that would be granted. It doesn't break above 63, uh, 63 and a half bucks first, but if it does not, it will set up for that. And uh, and we have all those bearish things, but because we are still above the yellow 20 month exponential moving average and have a golden cross, I do not, you know, for me, that's not a signal. Of course, it's not financial advisor, not a financial advisor, but the second that bit, the se sorry, the second that Mrs. Likewin, this very strong and independent and uh, powerful woman, break below the 21 exponential, which is uh, 58 and a quarter, I'd be looking for a move down to retest uh, 52 and a half to 53 bucks down here. Uh, we are hitting a major resistance as well, so there's a lot of bearish things on this. But of course, that is my rule for that sort of thing. You know, again, I'm just sh I'm just sharing what I'm doing. I'm not, you know, I'm not saying that this is financial advice or anything like that. Uh, but uh, but yeah, more importantly for Mrs. Likewin. She is right at the major area where she can actually start to really change around the whole disposition of this, uh, you know, of her market. Uh, she is the closest and best best argument for the bear market, perhaps being close to being over. As uh, if she does break above sixty three and a half dollars, I mean, at that point, I'm not, I'm just not bearish really on any time frame after that. Uh, I, you know, technically speaking, I would be looking for a move towards like seventy five bucks maybe. But I, I do, at that point, I'm just, you know, I'm just in general uptrend mode. I'm not necessarily. Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not looking to sell. Uh, so it would, it would change around my whole disposition. But as you can see, yes, a lot of things signaling in the lower time frames weakness. And here's the thing. This is like when led this market to the upside. Does she, you know, if she tires out and, and starts starts coming back down, does she lead the market to the downside? Well, that has been the trend. That has been the trend in the past. And you do see the four hour starting to lose its luster already. The four hour kind of making its own, you know, its own trend line right here. 
um, basically actually kind of making an ascending triangle right now, but, uh, but at the very least I'd be looking for a test down to 59 bucks and then we'll see if we can balance it. If it does want to continue the ascending triangle, it will get picked up there. If not, then we'll see it drop back down to the 55 and a half dollar region. Um, so yeah, but higher time frames rule the world right now. Of course, let's go to the weekly. Weekly is grinding all these major exponentials. Look at this. The 50 exponential, the 89 exponential, both very, 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 very close to each other. And we are we are putting in a couple of, we are putting in a pair of doji dildos, which to me is typically not the most bullish sign. Uh, we do see weekly stokes get very, very far up there. We haven't seen them this far up there in the history of, of Coinbase, essentially. Uh, weekly RSI is just getting into the neutral zone. A lot of the time you will see defense right around that area as well. So a lot of things are seemingly this one wants to come back down. And, and from a weekly perspective, wants to come back down and test about 50 Fifty dollars, or maybe even a little bit below fifty bucks. Uh, so I would be think I would be saying that about that. Uh, Mr. Buterall, uh, Mr. Buterall, Bueller, Bueller, Buterall. Uh, I, I consider this another test of the twenty-one exponential that we saw on that move up to one forty-nine. In fact, it looks like we got that move to kind of test that next level that we, you know, that we've been speaking about. Um, I said that uh, as soon as we break above what was it one forty-three, uh, I'd be looking at one fifty-ish area. We got that. I mean, we basically we basically came a dollar shy of that the other day. I think that that's good enough. We do see um, we do not see bearish divergence here. We do see. Well, we don't we don't really see anything of note in the daily RSI. I'd say daily stokes are technically up, but more neutral than anything. As far as dildo formations go, this one kind of wants to come down a little bit. But we do see a very obvious uh, trend line forming right here. Kind of getting these lows. We can actually make it a little bit more uh, precise, getting it down like that. And uh, we do see this trend line being formed right here, kind of coming in from this former order block, which would be probably right at one of those major fibs. Anyways, this chart getting very convoluted as well. I'll have to fix this one one up afterwards. But basically, as long as it's below 147.5 and, and above uh, 135 and a half, uh, which is probably probably like the 382 Fibonacci retracement, I'd imagine. Um you know, it's I'd, I'd just be kind of neutral on this uh, as being its own consolidation. If it breaks up to the upside above 147 and a half, then I would be looking for that move towards uh, 161 right over here. So we already hit that first kind of target at around 150. Uh, it came about a buck short, was a little bit front ran. That's okay. Uh, if it does take out this next level, I'd be looking towards 160, 161. Uh, by the same token, if it takes out 135 to the downside, I'd be looking for a move at the very least to 127 and a half, and then probably lower towards uh, 121, 120, 120, one and a half ish area. So I think I've covered just about everything that I want to speak about. My God, another very long and safe and safu long term analysis done on this beautiful Sunday. I'll quickly wrap it up right here. Uh, lower time frames. Let's go to a four hour. Bitcoin still working on this massive symmetrical triangle. Again, an equal opportunity formation can equally break up to the upside as to the downside. This one does look more constructive in nature, which would imply more bullish, uh, bullish resolution to it. But first things first, need to see a at least a four hour total close above 4100, uh, above the 200 exponential on the weekly would be good. Um, if, if Bitcoin can do that, that would start to change around the, you know, change around my perspectives on it. If if we especially if we can close this weekly, which expires today at 8 p.m. Eastern time, above uh, that 4100 level, of course. CMEs of the utmost importance, uh, where we are in relation to to where CMEs closed on Friday on spot charts right before they open at 7 p.m. at e uh, Eastern Time later tonight is kind of the next trade that I'll be looking to do on spot. If we're below on spot, then I'll be looking to be a seller on gap fill. If we're above on spot, I'll be looking to be a buyer. Um, by the same token, uh, if we do break up to the upside of this whole formation, that would also have confluences into breaking the monthly above the 50 exponential as well as the weekly above the 200 exponential, which I would start to look towards those higher targets. 4250 40, 40, probably gets hit rather quick. I would be looking for a little bit of selling uh, there and then reassess, but technically speaking, the measure move is to 4,500-ish area. Um, by the same token, if we break this to the downside, which is 3,900, which doesn't look too likely right now, I would be looking for a move towards uh, 3,550 and what else do we have to say i think that that's it i think that's it again keep your eyes on the higher time frames right now we're closing a weekly and monthly later tonight so celebrate and of course want to remind you all my programs are on sale for the rest of the day i suppose <laughs> the rest of the day with the code year 20 um definitely take advantage of that like i said if you've been interested in them because i don't really have, i don't really uh i'm not really thinking about having any sales anytime soon um i, I don't really know of any holidays coming up uh, that would warrant that. And also, well, this was this was the one year anniversary of this community, which, hey, man, thank you for being a part of this community. This this community has been so fucking amazing. We have I've met so many cool people through this place from all different walks of life, not just with trading, but just experts in just every area. People who are in some ways quite high profile, which I 
you'd I think a lot of people would be surprised they're here, which I am myself. I I sh probably shouldn't name names, but this community is just so it just it does feel special. It really does. So again, that's so more importantly than the program being on sale, I do want to say thank you for that. It has been one one great year, and, uh, and I look forward to another one. Anyways, I'm gonna sign off right now. Take care. I hope you have a great rest of your Sunday, and I'll see you soon.